does the Bible mandate any particular economic system, either socialism or capitalism or some mix in between? I'd say the answer to that is no, it doesn't. The Bible has a lot to say about economic life and about money and exchange. I think it has far less to say that's normative about economic systems. So the question I think we want to raise is which, which way of ordering economic life is most consistent with important biblical values? And then the question is, well, then what follows from that? Right? I, think you, I, I don't think there's a place to say that socialism is what's mandated by Scripture. The only real evidence for that has been things like Acts chapter 2 with the voluntary sharing of goods in common, which probably wasn't quite that to begin with, but it was just a, an extraordinary generosity among the early followers of Christ. I will say that that was highlighted in the book of Acts as an indication of the depth of their spiritual transformation was how they dealt with their economic life. But the, part of the, tri the tricky part about interpreting the scripture on this is that economic life in the first century was so different than economic life today that applying the biblical teaching on this is just fraught with hermeneutical challenges. Not to say that it can't be done, but it has to be done very carefully. You know, for, for example, uh, the Bible tends to be fairly skeptical about the accumulation of wealth. And it's got a lot of pretty hard things to say to the rich. Part of the reason, I think, for that has to do with the idolatry of money. But a major part of the reason for that is the immoral means by which most wealth was obtained in the ancient world. In fact, I'd say the norm was for people who got rich, it was either through theft, extortion, oppression, or some sort of exploitation of people who were victimized and vulnerable. That's why the prophets, I think, had so much to say about the rich oppressing the poor. And most people in the ancient world got wealthy through some sort of abusive power, which is why I think part of the reason Jesus could say it's easier for a rich man to enter the kingdom, or harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom than a camel to go through the eye of a needle was that the norm for people getting wealthy was that it was so, so frequently done through immoral means that, were, that, were, that involved fatal compromises to one's faith. I think this also explains the reason why there's so little teaching in the scripture on ambition. Because economic life was a zero-sum game where the size of the pie was relatively fixed and there was, it, there was very limited socioeconomic mobility. In fact, in biblical times, there was no such thing as, a, as rags to riches stories. Uh, and most people were stuck in the same socioeconomic place that they were born into. And so the idea that you could have legitimate ambition to get ahead, again, most often included these immoral means. And so the opposite of contentment, I would say, in the scripture is not ambition, which we so frequently pit those as opposites today, but in reality, the opposite of contentment in the Bible is envy. Because if, because if, there, was no other, if there was no option, for the most part, to, to advance yourself socioeconomically, the only other alternative was simply to envy your neighbor. Uh, so I think we need, to be really, we need to be careful how we understand the scripture on this. I think there's probably a place to say that important biblical values such as creativity and freedom and innovation, what we would call entrepreneurial traits, have a lot to do with, with what it means to be made in the image of God. And so an economic system that maximizes those entrepreneurial traits, I would argue, is, a, is more consistent with biblical teaching than systems that don't maximize those things. Now that being said, what follows from that is not this idea that we just sort of let the free market you know, run however it chooses. Uh, and the idea that you could be sort of a market fundamentalist after the meltdown of the financial sector, that's an increasingly hard position to hold. 
it doesn't follow from the biblical discussion that the state has no significant role to play in the regulation of the marketplace. Uh, and so the, really, the de, I think the debate over the intersection of faith and economics probably has more to do with the degree to which uh, human beings are trusted to restrain their self-interest versus the degree to which government is necessary to restrain the self-interest of human beings and to keep that from going to excess. So that, I think, probably is more where the debate is, and it's not clear to me that the Scripture has all that much that would be definitive or normative uh, to say in that discussion. Um, that would probably be more for our, our prudential wisdom uh, to, uh, to sort out the means. The Scripture is really clear about the ends of an economic system, that it's just to provide uh, a living, for the masses to make sure the poor are taken care of and provide meaningful work for individuals. The best means by which that occurs, I think, is the one that maximizes these entrepreneurial traits. Uh, beyond that, I think there's room for discussion about the relative role of government.